So today we will discuss on the topic unconsciousness. The, in the definition, it is an abnormal state resulting from disturbance of sensory perception to the extent that the patient is not aware of what is happening around him. Here, it is an abnormal state. It is a state where the patient has disturbance in sensory perception. As a result, he will not be able to see or hear what is happening around him. It may be momentary. That means it may happen for a few moments or it may last for a month. So uh, it may last for a longer period of time also. Then there are uh, various levels of consciousness. Excited three, unconsciousness, then somnolence, and stuporous or coma. First, in the first level, that is excitatory unconsciousness, the person will not be aroused unless the sensory stimuli is given. It is commonly seen in patients who are under the next is somnolent. Here, the patient is extremely drowsy and will respond only when spoken to directly or perhaps when touched. So, in the somnolence, the patient is drowsy and he will only respond when being touch or spoken then stuporous this is the next stage in the stuporous the patient responds only to painful stimuli such as pricking or pinching of the skin here in this stage the patient is respond responding only when painful stimuli is given for example we, we can prick or pinch the skin in the etiology the first is due to the structural lesions in the brain. So when there is any structural lesions inside the brain, like due to brain tumor or cerebral hemorrhage, there will be unconsciousness. In the metabolic disorders like infections, hypoglycemia, nutritional deficiency, this um, uh, unconsciousness will be there. In cases of any infections, when there is when the person is having any uh, low glucose level and nutritional deficiency. Then uh, psychogenic causes include the hysteria, catatonia. So these are the psychogenic causes. These are the men, three men, and others include the like car accident. When there is uh, when there is any road traffic accident, the person may be having the severe loss of blood or uh, a blow to the chest or any injury or trauma, which may lead to the unconsciousness then drug overdose if there is if the person is having um, a drug in large amounts then this the side effects will cause the unconsciousness then alcohol poisoning may also cause the unconsciousness so these are the uh, other various common etiology or causes of unconsciousness so unconsciousness is caused by trauma any injury due to the infection, any infection due to the structural changes in the brain, due to drug dehydration, low low blood sugar, low blood pressure, etc. So all due, due to all of this, the, the brain will not be able to get the required oxygen, resulting in coma. In the pathophysiology, we can see, due to the etiological factors or the risk factors, there will be direct compression in the brain stem. This will cause the this this will cause the hypoxia. That means there will be no oxygen supply inside the cells of the brain. Then, due to this hypoxia, there will be ischemia. Ischemia means there will be decreased level of oxygen inside the blood also. Then, due to if there is a decreased level of blood, then it will the chemicals which are needed to carry out the functions in, inside our body will not be formed. So there are various chemicals which are responsible for carrying out the different functions inside, the, inside our body. So these various chemicals will not be able to function properly because of the decrease in the blood supply. So it will lead to unconsciousness and last. Next is the clinical manifestations. In the clinical manifestations, uh, these are the symptoms, signs and symptoms which we will be seeing in a patient which is going to undergo the unconscious state. So just before the unconscious state, the person will be having the sudden inability to respond, slurred speech, rapid heartbeat, confusion, dizziness or lightheadedness. 
the first one is a sudden inability to respond. That means the person will not be able to respond to the surroundings. Then slurred speech. Slurred speech means the person will not be able to pronounce the words properly. In the rapid heartbeat, the person will, have, will be having tachycardia or increased heartbeat. In the confusion, the person will not be able to think clearly or respond normally. In the dizziness or lightheadedness, the person will not be able to uh, maintain the balance or he will be uh, feel like a feeling of disbalance. Next is a diagnostic assessment. In the diagnostic assessment, first we'll see the Glasgow Coma Cell, that is the GCS. Here in the GCS, we'll mainly see the eye response, motor response, and verbal response. In this computerized tomography and magnetic resonance imaging, that is the CT scan and MRI, we'll see if there is any structural changes inside the brain. Then in the lumbar puncture, we'll see if there is any changes inside the cerebrospinal fluid inside our brain and spinal cord. Next is the EEG. EEG it is a test which is used to detect the electrical impulses, the abnormalities in the electrical impulses or the brain waves inside our brain. Then next is a ventriculography. Ventriculography means it is a test used which is used to determine the function of the heart or the function of the ventricles inside the heart. Then angiography. Angiography it is a test to check the our blood vessels by using the x-ray. In the drug level, uh, here we'll see the level of certain medication which is given to the patient, whether they are causing the toxic side effects or not. In the LFT or RFT, that means the liver function test or the renal function test, we'll see the, uh, will evaluate the kidney or liver functions. In the blood gases and pH, we'll see the oxygen and carbon dioxide level in the blood the changes and various changes in the pH level also. In the serum glucose, calcium, sodium level, etc. So here we'll check the level of glucose, calcium, sodium, potassium, iodine, etc. which are inside our blood. So these are the electrolytes which are inside our blood. Next is the management. In the management, we will do the ABCs. That is the airway, breathing, and circulation, we will assess and give the immediate management. Next, we'll do the further examinations, and after that, we'll take the history, and after that, we'll send the investigation. So first, we'll do, we will provide the airway, breathing, and circulation first. And in the immediate management, we'll maintain the IV line, we'll give the oxygen inhalation, We'll do the blood sample for the random blood sugar and we'll control the scissors and we'll give the medications like IV glucose, thymine, naloxone. These are given to increase the glucose levels and to decrease the symptoms of numbness or drowsiness inside the body. In the nursing management, first we'll maintain the adequate airway. Then after providing the adequate airway, we will maintain the circulation. We will give the various drugs and medications to maintain the circulation of the patient. And we will position the patient in a comfortable position. Then we will, after that, we will give the various care like the mouth care, eye care, and fluids will give. Then we will provide the food if the patient is able to take. Then we will see for any prevention of accidents like we will provide the side rails and prevention of falls, etc. We will assess the patient care. In the summary, also we can see first the ABC or the airway breathing circulation of the life support to be given first. Then after that, we will give the oxygen and the IV access. We will stabilize the cervical spine. That means the cervical area or the neck region of the patient should be straight. Then blood glucose level will be assessed. Uh, according to that, we'll, uh, we will see if there is any need for giving the glucose, IV glucose or not. Then we should control the scissors. If there is any chance of scissors or if there is any scissor, we will provide the medications to control the scissors. Then we should 
considered the IB glucose, thymine, naloxone. So all these medications will be to be given. Then after that, we'll do the examination, physical examination, like GCS and all. Then obtain the history, and we will send the various investigations, like CT scan, MRI, blood test, angiography, ventriculography, EEG, etc. Then we will reassess the situation and plan further. So this is the brief summary of the management of the patient with unconsciousness. Lastly, there are certain complications which will be occurring in a patient with unconsciousness. They are the first one is coma or brain damage. Potential complications of being unconscious for a long period of time include coma and brain damage. So if the person is being unconsciousness for a long period of time, then uh, there will be coma or brain damage will be there as a complication. Then second complication is the rib fracture or the broken broken ribs. So this is um, this will be here there in case of patients who have undergone the CPR. If the person has sustained the cardiac arrest, then the person will be given the chest compressions. So while giving the chest compressions, the person's ribs or the uh, bones of the ribs will be broken. So here uh, a chest x-ray should be done and after that the fractured or broken ribs should be treated. Then next complication is choking. Choking due to any fluid or liquid which are blocking the airways. When unconsciousness happens, the person might be having any fluid or liquid substance in the airway which might block the airway and choking might be caused. So these are the three men. So these are all about the unconsciousness and management. So we have seen what is unconsciousness definition, then the various levels of consciousness, then causative factors, then pathophysiology, then what are the signs and symptoms, diagnostic features, and management. We should never forget the five steps of management. Okay, there are the ABCs. Immediate management, examination, history, and investigations.